from the worldwide leader in sports amidst the second round of the National Basketball Association playoffs. How you doing, Ramona? Good. How are you guys? Bad. We're 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 hanging in there. We're psyched to be watching. Well, I mean, the last couple of games have been blowouts, but the the, the final eight including Lakers and Warriors, um, LeBron and uh, Kari on the same court has been amazing. Well, what's been, um, what's that been like from your perspective, seeing that, Ramona? I mean, it, it feels like a final, right? I mean, it feels like the NBA finals already with the amount of attention on it, with the amount of adjustments, game to game, minute to minute, the star power and wattage, like, you know, I was doing radio in LA the other day and uh, my co-host Steve Mason was asking me like, who are the, who are the athletes that make the most money in, you know, last year in the world, right? And, of course, it's going to be Ronaldo and Messi, right? And I think. Yeah, Ramona, you're frozen. Like, these are the two most marketable guys, the ones who have established themselves as as international superstars on that level. And we're getting it in the second round. It almost feels like I, I want this series to go on for a while, right? Because but it's going to be almost a letdown in the Western Conference Finals when one of them loses. Yeah, six versus seven. seven the, the NBA will never have a six versus seven quite like this one. Does it? Does it? Um, does it get LeBron jacked up? I, I, again, uh, obviously he's been there. He's done that. He's the all-time leading scorer. Um, you know, he wants to win. I understand what another championship would mean to him, so on and so forth. But do, does does the fact that it's Curry and that they go far back, way back, and that they're doing it again right now together? Uh, at, at at different stages of advanced ages, does that land on LeBron, in your estimation? I, you know, I, I gotta be honest. I think some of it is just it's like more. It's just fun. Like you see them talking during the game. Like they've just been through it so many times. But I, you know, I I think with LeBron, like he's 38. He'll turn 39 at the end of this year. Kind of incredible. He's still this good. And I think he's just close enough that he can taste it that nothing else matters. Right? Like the fact that. They made those midseason trades. They reconfigured the team to where he's got a squad now. You know, it's it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was the beginning of the year. And the fact that he's got a squad that he can see a finish, he can see a title. That's the only thing that matters. Because like, I, you know, honestly, the last couple of years, like, I was kind of wondering where he's getting his motivation from. Like, it felt a little like empty calories when he was chasing Kareem down and the team was bad. Like, you know, I'm glad he got that record. He deserves that record. But, like, LeBron's about the winning. He's he's the player who I think style leads to winning probably better than almost, you know, anyone who's ever played this game in the way he elevates his teammates and um, and just, you know, his, his decision-making out there. Uh, and I think – the fact, I think he probably at some when he got to four, I, I, there was maybe a question: Would you would would he even have a chance at five or six? And this team does, and I kind of think that's all that matters right now. Like, yeah, I mean, like what what's 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 getting you up at five o'clock in the morning to train like he does? It's the idea that he could get a title. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, the Lakers are not a house money organization, right? We're we're hey, we're playing right. with house money, and and LeBron, as you pointed yeah. out age 38 going to 39, you know, house money doesn't mean much to him, but they are truly playing with it right now. I mean, they have the home court advantage in a best of five series right now to move on to the Western Conference Finals. And nobody thought when Darvin Ham was hired and Russell Westbrook was standing in the corner of his press conference yeah. and we're all wondering how workable oh. this all is. I mean, they are light years from that moment. Light years. You know, I knew Darvin back in, I've known him since 2011, right? And that was the year he was an assistant on Mike Brown's staff with the Lakers, right? Do you remember that year? Yeah, sure. That was uh, Phil Jackson had just retired. Mm -hmm. We came off the lockout. There's a Chris Paul trade that gets undone. <laughs> and then Mike Brown and his staff, which if you look back at that staff, it was a pretty good staff. They had Quinn Snyder on that staff, Darvin Ham, Mike Brown, Steve Clifford, um, those guys, they walked into a buzzsaw, right? I mean, can you imagine walking in and having a coach under those circumstances, following Phil Jackson, you know, like having to, to coach Kobe and Pal and Derek Fisher and those guys who, who had learned from the Zen master. And, and you know, Darvin's kind of, he knew what he was getting into when he took the job because he had been through that year. He'd been through, you know, everything that, that went on in 2011. And, um, even even after all that, I remember seeing him a couple of times early on and being like, 
Darwin, you you all right, man? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the first the first five games, I was, that was that was unlike anything I'd seen in a long time in the NBA. With as bad as it was with Westbrook, and you know the decision of like, are we going to send this guy home? I mean, it's it was literally it was it was pretty bad. Plus, they had no shooting. They had they had just really very little to work with. Their defensive players were just. You know, there was like that AD back there, and that's about it. You know, I mean, it was it was rough, and the fact that they've been able to flip the script here and and just completely turn over the roster is pretty remarkable. I think Darwin deserves a lot of credit for just keeping the team in it, keeping them together, and not completely fracturing. Because that 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 two and ten start, the way that they got off to this season with the personality, and and, and I don't want to just say Westbrook. I think. There was a few very difficult personalities in that locker room. The beginning, you know, Pat Beverly was was a difficult one for people this year in LA, um, and uh, it was it was that was that was rough. And and I can't believe they're they're here now, considering how bad it was at the beginning. No doubt about it. And then um, you know, in, in this series, it's uh, I, you know I don't know what to make of it with Anthony Davis. He went from Wilt Chamberlain in Game One to Neville Chamberlain in Game Two. You know what I mean? Like it's. <laughs> I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, do. I don't know what to make of it. I do know it. my British Prime Minister history. There you I go. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> appeasement. <laughs> the appeasement. Um, you know, so I, 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 yeah. I don't know what to make of this team as they head home to take on the Warriors. What, what, do, you, what do you make of it, Ramona? You know, the, the same thing happened in the Memphis series, right? They had they won game one, and then they kind of coasted in game two. You didn't see the same energy and urgency in game two. And I think they were tired, you know, playing with house money after getting that first that first win, but also Golden State was going to respond. Um, I also thought Draymond Green's defense on Anthony Davis was was formidable. I mean, it was that Draymond is one of the greatest. I, I would put him up there as one of the best defenders in NBA history in terms of. I mean, the last series he he was guarding De'Aaron Fox, and this series he's he's defending Anthony Davis. That's ridiculous yep. that he can do that. And I I can't believe that the same guy can can guard those two players really well too and um i thought he made ad's life a lot harder he was the warriors just basically said we're just going to be physical with anthony davis we're just going to make him very uncomfortable and it's not really how the warriors play I mean, you know they're they're known as a sort of uh, they play fast and it's curry the curry flurries right and play hitting threes and 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 they move the ball and they have that sort of organized chaos but they can be physical when they need to be. And and that's what they're going to do the rest of the series on Anthony Davis. And he then has to adjust. And I think he will come home. Well, and again, you know, uh, Draymond, as you bring up, Ramona Shelburne here on the Rich Eisen Show, you know, he, he's he's gone in these playoffs from the, the guy who we all thought would never appear again after he hit, you know, King James and the Crown Jewels all those years ago and yeah. cost his team there. And he reared, he reared his, you know, ugly foot, I guess, onto the chest of Sabonis. <laughs> and we're all wondering if if he's even a viable piece anymore. And and he shows again, he's just a Hall of Famer, man. He's a Hall of Famer as they yeah. come. So uh, watching these Warriors, I can't help but think about the deep dive I'm going to read. Maybe you'll write it. Maybe someone else will write it. It's coming after this season. And it's going to either be yeah. about another championship run or one that came short. What will the deep dive about this Warrior season reveal, do you think? Ramona, what do you, you think? You know what? Um, I because I'm definitely going to write it. I, I've already been planning on that, right? I bet. I bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First of all, so you know, I was planning for it last series because we thought when they went down 0-2 against the Kings, we we're like, oh man, you better get up there and get ready to write the last dance story, right? <laughs> right. Like, maybe it is. Okay. Yeah. And I was doing a call with my editor. I'll give her a shout out. Say, you know, my her name is Christina Daglas, and we were we were talking. She goes. I don't know. Is it really the last dance? Is that was that really the tension point here? And I go, you know, you're right because Steve Kirk, Steve Kirk keeps saying like I was a part of the last dance in Chicago, and this is not that because the last dance started when Jerry Krause, Bill Jackson's not going to be back. Like he was already hiring his replacement, and so they knew it was over. It's like, you know, I don't know if you watch Succession or anything, oh, but yeah. like when they say this is the last season of Succession at the beginning of the year. Like you kind of know what's going to happen at some point during the final season, right? I don't want. Are we far enough past? No, nah, no. Like, we're, I think we're still. Player? Yeah, no. we're still in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're still in that in that gray zone. Um, but like, I think everybody kind of recognizes, like, it is. You know, we're we're in a place where this is 
this is not necessarily over. I know everybody, we talk about the $500 million next year and how can they keep them all together. We do all that. I don't, I don't know that it's over. I think it gets harder. Hmm. Being around that team, there's a sort of um, quality, and you guys, what the deep dive is about. Um, I think what these playoffs have made very clear is that there's no reason to break up these three guys. These guys, they might be getting older, and I know they, the Warriors tried to take the two-pronged approach, like let's have the older guys and then, and then draft and develop a new generation to take over for them and pass the baton. And, and watching these playoffs, guys, the younger generation is not ready, and they're not cut from the same cloth. And I think you just keep the, this group together as long as you can. So if there are trades to be made, I mean, I, you know, you're going you're gonna to hear stuff. Mm-hmm. Draymond's going to decide on his player option. Play makes $43 million in an expiring deal. I'm sure they'll entertain all of those discussions, and they'll, they'll have to really work through it. But, you know, if I'm, if I'm Golden State and you want to still have a chance to win a title every year, you just keep those three guys together, and you, you do what you got to do with everyone else. You know, keep Wiggins, and I don't know what you say about – I don't know what happens with Jordan Poole. I don't know what happens with Kaminga and Moody and some of the young players that, you know, they've gotten chances to develop. And, and Poole, I think, has done a good job, but he, he hasn't really given anyone the confidence that he's going to be the next Steph, right? Um, so I, I think it's – these three guys are just – they're still there, and they're still together, and they, they should just stay together. For as long as, as long as they can, because they, those that that combination works, and and maybe that deep dive is really just about fighting for it, you know, proving that you're still there, you you know, it's not gonna look as as young or quick or pretty as it did in 2015, but they still know how to make adjustments, they still know how to win, they still know how to have big games when they need them. Ramona Shelburne here. A few more minutes left with the NBA Insider and so much more for the worldwide leader in sports here on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, the the general consensus is, you know, Lakers Warriors. Boy, won't that be a great series against Kevin Durant and the Suns? And then there's the top seed in the West raising their hands. As I've never seen a, a, a you know a a 50 plus win team raise their hands as a one seed as a fly in the ointment. But that's what the the Nuggets appear to be right now for sure. How good are the Nuggets? What do you think? Winning it all? I think stuff? they're really good. I think they're really good. And and and. Nobody paid attention to them because they have this weird TV deal. Nobody can watch them hardly, and, you know, and they're out where they are. And then they, Jokic is the most reluctant superstar we've seen in this league in a long time. You know, he just, he's just there. You know, he's just amazing and talented and, and fabulous every night. But he, he doesn't stir the pot. He doesn't say anything of note. He's not trying to lean into any narratives or drama. Um, he just goes out and does what Jokic does. Um, and then I think Jamal Murray was – took all year to get back from his his injury i think he's really rounding into form now but the reason why the nuggets are so good is because of their depth like it's it's hard to talk about you know a a team and and be like you should get excited about the seventh man on that team or the eighth man but that's why they're winning the series and they're they're you know they just have so much more depth than phoenix and and now with this injury to chris paul the phoenix even has less depth so it's it's you know, getting Bruce Brown, getting Contavious Caldwell Pope, get, getting Jeff Green, like those, those were just big additions for them, and they give them so many different looks and so many, so many different um, ways of attacking a, a team like Phoenix. And you know, I, and I covered that first round with Phoenix uh, in the Clippers, mm-hmm. and I felt like the Clippers had a lot of depth too, but then they lost Kawhi, and it was, it was kind of a wrap. But they weren't able to exploit the Suns' lack of depth, but you saw that issue already. I mean, it's you know, Devin Booker's playing 45 minutes a game. You know, it was you know every game I'm asking questions about the minutes, and those guys are like, ah, minutes still matters. Kevin was like, I was hurt all year. I didn't play that much. And I was like, I I hear you, and you guys are winning, so that's okay. But it's not going to work the whole playoffs like this. Hmm. And I think that's what you're seeing now. Okay. And then in the East, um, is Embiid. What, uh, what what percentage is he? Do we do we have an issue with that? Uh, did we see? Um, you know, what, what we're going to get out of the Sixers or, or they're just, you know, what do you think here? I, I still think Philly feels pretty good about their shot. Mm-hmm. Um, James Harden shot, shot the ball terribly in game two after being great in game one, but, but they, um, and beat is not going to be his same dominant self for a while. Like I think his injury, he said it after the game and I, I, you know, I, I don't know if people fully appreciate what he, 
came back from because he, you know, they didn't they didn't get all very specific about exactly what it was, but it was no, it's, a, it's your LCL, which is a, a lateral collateral ligament, and it stabilizes your knee. And so it's it's one of those things that, if it, you know, they have all these grades, okay? And I think grades are subjective in terms of, you know, grade zero, grade one, grade two. His was somewhere between a one and a two. And, and you know, if it's one, then it's you do come back on the team, time frame he did. If it's two, it's four to six weeks. So he's he was a little more than a one, you know, and and he came back. Like, he wasn't able to do much while he was out. He came back really fast. Uh, you know, he got some treatments for it that helped speed up the healing, but it also, um, that's another thing to recover from. So he's, you know, really, a, it's been two weeks since the initial injury. I think it was April 20th. So it's two weeks from there. And um, I think I think if they they just need to, they need to lean heavily on Harden in this series if they're going to get by Boston. And you'll see a, a more a, a player that looks a lot like Joel in another week or two. But right now he's got to play his way back into shape. He's got to play his way through that injury, and he's lugging around that big old brace. And mm-hmm. you know, I thought he had the tights over it, so you couldn't see it. But he hates playing with anything like that. Like he hates the face mask, the brace, any any of that stuff. Like it, it's it bothers him. And he doesn't. He's not going to seem like himself. But I thought defensively he looked great in the first half. I just think conditioning-wise, he just hasn't been able to do anything for two weeks. And then Butler and Randall, just to round everything out here, uh, do yeah. we see, do we see them back? What do you got for me on that front? Any... Yeah, I think so. I mean, okay. I, I look, Butler's ankle was not a good ankle sprain, so whatever percentage of him we see when he gets back in the series, is, mm-hmm. you know, he's going to be dealing with that the rest of the time. But but mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler's a gamer. Like I, I, I think we're going to see. You know, this time year everybody's hurt and. And Julius Randle, I know we've been talking about him being out, but he, he you have to remember, Julius never misses a game. Like, so when he's out, he's, this is a big deal for him. But he, he plays all the time. He plays every game. He would have played 82 this year if he didn't get that ankle injury. Um, he, does, he plays the second night of a back-to-back. He plays hard, that intensity. And so I'm not worried about him in this series. I don't know if he can be quite as effective without the same burst because of his ankle injury. Same thing with Brunson. But, you know, I, I, that series feels to me like it's going to go – a while too because everybody's dealing with stuff and so far the heat have been the most impressive the more impressive team to me i thought my i thought miami even without jimmy butler was in that game game two and that that was impressive and i i think going home they'll they'll either win one or both of these games here last one for you ramona shelburne if you don't mind uh with mike budenholzer being fired and nick yeah. nurse being fired weeks before that and frank vogel being fired last off season that's Steve Kerr is the only head coach of a championship team yeah. in the last four years to still be employed. Is there, you know, obviously everything's got its own fingerprint, but is there just a general sense as to why championship, world championship head coaches are, are being fired in the okay, so, NBA? Yeah. I mean, I, look, you need you need a couple things to win a championship, right? You need a championship level head coach, you need superstars, and then you need the right mix of role players, right? Um, and Nick Nurse lost his superstar that won him a title. It was Kawhi Leonard. He was mm-hmm. only there for that year. Um, and and I think Nick Nurse is seen as one of the best coaches in the NBA. He's going to land quickly, and he's going to land well. So that was just a, he'd been there for a while. They may be going into a different phase of the rebuild. And, uh, you know, if he's not up for it and they're not up for, for that, you know, that rebuild, then you got to make sure you get somebody who is. Um I think with Frank Vogel, like he was, he was always a like Frank earned a lot of respect as a as a coach with the Lakers. But um, I, I think LeBron got more credit for that title than Frank Vogel did. And 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 you know the, the Lakers aren't going to make a, a move on a head coach. And you know, the same as the Bucks aren't going to make a move on Mike Budenholzer without consulting with their superstars, right? Like that's a that's a, I don't you know I don't think LeBron James disliked Frank Vogel at all. I think they had a good relationship. But did he stand in the way of him getting fired? No. Did, you know, Giannis, there was always kind of chatter about Giannis and Bud. And, but I was like, they won together. They did well together. I thought he kind of threw him under the bus in those playoff games about the answers Giannis gave after after those games of saying, you know, I wish we would have made an adjustment on Jimmy. And, you know, but I, I'm, I'm going to leave that to the coach. I mean, that's, that's just a pretty, pretty rough answer right there. Mm. Um, you know, I, I thought, you know, that those kinds of things, like, you don't have to be a, you don't have to be pushing the coach out the door, but if you don't stand in the way of it, that's that's the other part of it, right? So I don't I don't think Giannis stood in the way of Bud getting fired. Um, 
he, I don't think he pushed him either, but um, that's, that's why we're here. You know, like there's a Steve Kerr has Steph Curry and they've got a great relationship and that's why he's still standing. And that's why, you know, when they went and they were the last team, in the, you know, they had the worst record in the league a couple of years after winning a title. And they, they stuck with Steve Kerr because they know he's a great coach. And also because his superstar, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson and Draymond Green want him to be the coach and are really comfortable with him. Ramona, great stuff as always. Greatly appreciate your time. Let's do this uh, as the playoffs advance. Much appreciated. Yeah, Thanks. You got it, Safe journeys. Thanks. You got it. That's Ramona Shelburne of ESPN right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.